Hello everyone. Today we are going to create some irregular patterns for 2D and 3D of the growth like uh, what we see in trees. So this is what we can see in the 2D and in 3D something like this uh, tree like shapes. So let's uh, start. We are going to start from a new uh, document and first uh, starting from the for the 2D and growth uh, pattern I'm going to start from one curve in Rhino and uh, in bringing it inside my grasshopper using set one curve now the thing the first thing I want to do is that I want to copy this uh, curve and bring it in here so this part is uh, similar to what we had in the previous tutorial you can just check it if you want to remember it otherwise we are going to do it together so I'm going to move this and uh, the transition for me would be the vector and as you know you can just uh, connect a unit vector to a curve and it uh, creates a curve from the uh, start point that it was uh, drawn to the end point. So I can just uh, connect it to the T. Uh, but the thing is that uh, it's a unit vector, so the uh, size of it is just one, and uh, we want it to be exactly like what we had the length of this curve. So I'm going to multiply this to the length of the curve so that it can exactly come to this point. So now we can see that it worked as what we wanted it to work. And the next step I want to do is that I want to rotate this curve because I don't want it to go straight away. I want to make a branch. So first I'm going to rotate it. And for rotation I need um, the plane or the point that it starts from. And this point for me would be this end point of the first curve. So I'm going to use endpoints and extract this endpoint which is in here. Uh, and I want to make a plane in here. Uh, because it's not uh, completely perpendicular, so it's not an XY plane, I can make a plane based on this uh, curve that I have in here. And for that, I can find uh, the frame of this uh, uh, this point on this curve, and that's by using perpendicular frame. Taking this curve as the input and putting it on the parameterized because the t value is between zero and one. And for me, the value would be one because I want it to go to this um, end point. If I put it on zero. You can see that it works in the beginning of the curve. So I just put it on uh, 1 and now I have this frame which is uh, a plane. So I can use a deconstruct plane so that I can uh, extract the vectors of this plane that I have in here. So what I want is this vector and uh, also this uh, vector which I have uh, which is the same as uh, what uh, this curve and also the first curve so I can use a vector display uh, I also can use this one because it has more options for us as we discussed before uh, so the point would be this point the vector is one of these vectors so also we can use a multiplication so that the vector would be bigger and more visible and that, then it has the color which is on black now and the width let's put it also on um, bigger number so now let's see what it has made 
This is the vector that it has made. I can also make it bigger. But this is not what we want. So now let's change it to this one. Yeah, this is one of the vectors that we were uh, that we wanted it from this frame. So I'm going to use this vector for the construction plane, which I want to make in here based on this vector and this other one. So the plane would be the origin on this point. Also, I can use this endpoint. No different. The x would be this vector, as you see in here. So the x uh, is a little or uh, rotated from the original x that we had, and the y would be this vector. Now, as you see, we have this plane made in here. I can then just uh, hide these parts. And now this is the plane that we want this rotation to work on it. So if I connect it to the plane, and I can put uh, the um, angle on degrees and then start to give it a number. Let's put it on something from starting from minus 90 degrees up to 90. Okay, so as you see, now it's on minus 90 and it goes up to 90. So it covers the whole 180 degrees. Okay, let's say now we, we are satisfied with this um, new curve that we made. And now uh, we can also make a mirror of this curve or we can uh, duplicate this uh, angle. So we had uh, we have this uh, number. We can use a mesh component and add it to the number to the both uh, inputs of D1 and D2, as you see in here. And for one of them, uh, let's also use a negative. Because we have this um, number in here and it can be negative or positive, but we want to have the uh, negative of it so that we can cover the both sides. Okay, so now if I connect this uh, output of the merge to the A value, you can see that now we have the two branches that we are aiming for. You can just hide all these parts. But what you see in here, it gives us uh, a regular pattern, but uh, exactly like what we had in the previous tutorial. And we want this one to be irregular. So instead of using this fixed number and this method, we can use uh, random numbers. So I'm going to use the random value, random. And it uh, asks uh, for a range, so I'm going to put a construct domain. Uh, sorry, construct domain. This one. And uh, it asks uh, for the start and end of my domain. So I want to put it on minus, uh, like this, what we had in here. So. I'm going to use this number slider, put one of them on minus 90 and the other one on 90. Uh, and I can tell it how many numbers it will uh, give me as the result of this um, um, random component. For example, now it's on one number. So if I put it on two, it will give me two values and this is what I want. So instead of this part, I can just connect these values. So this is what uh, makes uh, two branches with different uh, rotations. And uh, now that I have this part, the whole uh, structured way of making this um, irregular pattern, I can put it in a loop so that it will uh, repeating each of these branches for uh, themselves. 
so it will make two branch in here two in here like what we had in the previous tutorial so as you know we use the anemone so I'm going to use the loop start and loop end and connect them together and bring one of them to the first part and the next one to the end of my code okay and as we discussed the uh, input would be the same so we have a curve in here connected to this one and the output is this uh, another important thing is that in here because we want it to uh, make different values for each uh, iteration of the loop uh, we can connect the output of this C which is the counter to this seed for the random values so you see that now it uh, made a difference uh, and the other thing is this uh, repeat which is the iteration number let's put it on uh, starting from 0 to 10 okay now if I put it on 1 you can see that it goes to the next step but the other thing is that what we mentioned before that because it makes two values we need to put it on graph so that it works on each of these uh, branches now you see that it made two okay so let's uh, see what the result would be uh, Another thing that was important to consider if you want to make a pattern and being seemingly interesting um, is the scaling. So in here we just uh, moved it, what you see in here, uh, we just moved it. But uh, we could do a uh, scaling, a scaling component before going to this step of uh, rotation which makes uh, a transition from this scale to smaller scales so let's also add it in here but before that let's go back to the first step because we don't want our program to crash so we have this uh, one and we want to make a scale in here um, and let's put the center on this point and the factor let's put it on something like 0 0.7 so that in each iteration the a new curve would be in a scale of 0 0.7 uh, uh, compared to the previous curve and now let's connect this one to this uh, rotation and let's run the program so and also we can put it on uh, record data so that we can see all these steps together so let's put it on something like three you can see that it's working um, we also could change uh, this domain to see how different it can work you can see that it, it changes the direction uh, it becomes a, uh, as we uh, decrease the domain of this um, uh, construct domain for the range you can see that it gets it uh, so compact and as we increase the values and the domain is vast uh, we can have uh, more freely placed items so let's test it for something like 10 you can see that now we have this kind of plant parts we can say and that's it this is uh, the 2d generation for our um, uh, growth pattern but uh, for the next part let's uh, put it on 3d what can we do to make it a 
3D pattern and like um, a plant or also a tree for example so let's uh, just uh, copy this part and then disable this part we can work on the copy part um, yeah so if we want to work on 3d uh, let's start from a curve in rhino and make it 3d so this is my curve in uh, rhino and as you know we, sh uh, we can um, press the control so that it uh, draws their line in the Z direction otherwise it just uh, draws it on 2D which is the uh, basic part for it in the plane of XY so now we have this uh, curve in the Z direction and let's uh, put it on 0 and reset it it's very important to do this uh, otherwise it will crash so let's uh, put this new curve as the input and uh, let's hide this part now let's start together again we have this curve we want to make um, a move of it in this direction exactly what we have in here we want it to have a scale so instead of being completely the same size it's a uh, 0 0.7 um, scaled compared to the first curve and now the, uh, the uh, next step for us is the rotation so what we have in here it's, uh, is making just uh, rotations in one plane which you can see in here so they are not in different directions and how to solve this is that we want we have to do it in different steps instead of doing just in one part so we have this uh, um, scaled curve and first we want to rotate it um, now let's just do it together to see how it works so I'm going to just delete this part uh, I want this uh, curve to rotate and the plane for it now is uh, this plane so let's see if we need to change it or not let's uh, put the uh, number slider on again minus 90 to 90 as you see it's just working in this plane but that's okay let's start with this and they, then we want to make it working in uh, 360 degrees so that it covers all this part so we have this one and then uh, we want to rotate it so now we can use the rotate 3d so that we can use this uh, axis this z axis uh, and rotate around it so i'm going to use this uh, geometry this curve as the input for the rotate 3d put this on degrees the center would be the same as this center which is this end point and the uh, axis we can put it on z and also again let's use this number slider or we could use a number slider from zero to 360 and here we had just 180 degrees of freedom but here is um, 360 so as you see it's working like what we um, wanted it to work so let's just um, hide this part so we can make this curve in the first step and then make this one as a result so again in here instead of using these uh, values we can use the random values because we don't want it to work just in one value of this in each iteration we want it to change the 
uh, value in each uh, iteration of the loop. So again, we are going to use the random value. And for here, uh, it's the same as what we had in here. So we made a, a construct domain and put it from minus 90 to 90, or then we changed it also. The good thing about parametric work is this uh, option that we always can change it. So let's put it on from minus 90 to 90. Or we can also limit it a little bit like this. And we put it at the value for the first uh, rotation. And the second rotation, again, would be another random value. And in here, we said that instead of this, we want to put it from 0 to 360. OK. So this would be somehow the result of what we expected for. We also uh, can do another thing. We can put it on um, the n value, the integration, the integer value would be on 2. You can see that we can have 3 output, 3 curves instead of just having 2. So this curve and these two would be our uh, curves and they will be uh, repeated in each part of these parts to complete a tree-like structure. So I'm going to use a merge and add these curves to it. And this would be the output of my code. So now uh, if I show this part and hide all the inside code we can see what the result would be so let's uh, just double click on it so that it's reset and uh, let's work with something from two okay again we see that it doesn't work properly and the reason is that we put uh, okay Let's see what, what uh, the problem would be. First, let's put it on 0. And uh, double click on it. OK. So we had a graph in here. And that's wrong because we don't want it to be in here. But that was because we copied this code. So it's very important to consider these changes when you copy. So we have this one uh, as one value. And here, two values. And the output of this range is where uh, we need to do a graph. So now let's check it again together. Now you can see that it worked like what we expected it to do. So now let's check something like 5. You can see that this is making a tree like a structure as we expected it to do. And uh, then we can also change these numbers to get a result of what is more um, desired for us. So it is making some differentiations when we change these uh, values. Or also we could change this scale factor. So instead of 70, if we put it on 0 0.8, you can see that it's different. Or let's make it less. And let's also change this domain a bit. Let's work on something like 10. This is the output. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this coding and see you in the next videos.